Hi, Mike Kennedy with you. We're looking at our uh, Ozark Trail camp axe or hatchet. Now, I've here's an axe I got at a local yard sale recently to clean up and everything. And I brought it out to show you some difference in designs so that you can have something to decide about. See how thin this is? See the difference between an axe? Look at the... The bevel on this one, there's a little bevel here, and there's a very large bevel here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that primarily axes are used for splitting or cutting into material, unlike a knife that's for slicing, okay? Without having that nice bevel there, and frankly, the weight, because this is a full-size axe, if this was a hatchet, this would all be scaled down, but the same principles would apply. You'd have a heavy head. You'd have more of a bevel. But of course, we're, we're constructing this out of this metal sheet. Now, the one of it as this has, I guess you could say, is it has the uh, ability to work as a wrench as well. So, I thought we'd just have some branches that came down. And I thought we'd just hit it once or twice with a smaller axe here and see. So you can't get a... You can't get a lot of force in there. But... I guess eventually you could get through there. Now, this could be used... You could uh, pummel it, in other words, not pummel it, sorry. You hit the back with something. You could make a baton out of wood, a mallet, and you could hit that. And maybe that would be more effective. Let's look in a little more detail here. So we've got the press metal. We get the paracord handle again. And again, if you took this off, this would be a very uncomfortable thing to hold. We have three eighths, one half, and five eighths holes. Now I wonder how calm those holes would be on something you need to adjust and that you could get at. Remember, see, this has got a lot of material around it, unlike a wrench, so that nut would have to be sticking up quite a bit from the surface or not have things around it, is what I'm saying, so you could actually use it for that. It does have a little guard here. That's always good to prevent hands from slipping. It does have this this nice little case as well. And the main state bird, which is a mosquito, has found me. They're all over the place. So the question comes up again with all these things. Uh, this almost seems more like, you know, the, the Inuit have a knife that looks sort of this shape and it has a wooden handle and they can kind of rock it back and forth. This looks more like that Alaskan style indigenous people knife than it does a hatchet when you look at that part of it. Actually, the blade here is just about the same blade as the knife as far as the length. And uh, like I say, it's kind of, a, kind of a problem because it's so light. Just trying to hit with it, you don't, uh, you don't have much a power behind it because of course the heavier your axe is that you picked it up and stored that energy and of course you can apply more force going down and that would cause the wood to chop or split more easily than something that's really light like this. So there we go. The Ozark Trail uh, hatchet camp axe whatever you want to call it, definitely not, not Tommy Hawk, but uh, not an axe, but uh, like I say, a small amount of bevel down here, but probably not enough to really uh, be useful for splitting a lot of stuff. Now, sitting around a campfire, I guess splitting some little branches, yeah, this would do it, especially if you uh, put it on the top and of something and then you hit it with this 
you could drive that like they do with batoning with knives. You could do that with this. And uh, it would probably work all right. But not quite what I would call a hatchet. But this was in the $30 kit we bought. I'm holding more hope out for the machete because the machete being larger hits me more the idea that it will be more like a knife than the knife was like a knife. So we'll see. Bye.